Okay, let's get started. So go to the learn section in animate and we're going to do create a dancing fire animation. So go ahead and click on this, watch the video if you haven't already, and then click get started. So um, this tutorial does not work, so we're going to hit skip tour and we're going to hit um, end tutorial and it might prompt you to keep this page open, hit yes. So first thing we need to do is grab our poly star tool. So you just click and drag and it's over here. It opens up our properties panel and the tool section of the properties panel. This is where we can adjust everything for our polygon. Um, yours will be set to five. Um, mine is set to three just because I've already been messing with this. Um, but if you come down to tool options, style, and then number of sides, we're gonna turn this down to three. Um, three sides obviously gives us a triangle. Um, we are then going to draw our triangle here. Um, you know, shift will snap it um, straight for you and then let go when you like the size. Okay, I'm just gonna move this to the center. So right now, um, this is a object and we need to convert it to what's called a symbol. Um, right now we are in our main timeline. When you create a symbol, it um, is then able to have its own timeline. So um, it's nest um, small timelines into the bigger main timeline. So what we're gonna do is if you come over here, now that I have my triangle selected, um, you'll see that under properties, objects is now um, set. And under shape is expand to fill, create an object, convert to symbol, and create a new painting. What we are gonna be using is this convert to symbol icon. So you're gonna click this and we're gonna name it flame. And then if you look, there's type. There's three different types. There's a movie clip, a button, and a graphic. Um, we will be working with graphic. Graphic it is the easiest to preview, work with, and there's no coding involved. Movie clip um, supports like JavaScript um, and other forms of coding, um, and it makes them a little bit more complicated. It also is harder to preview. Um, and then button is exactly that. It is a button on the screen. When you click, something happens. Um, again, that has backend coding, um, which we're not going to get into. So we have flame, graphic, and we hit OK. So now, if you look, my uh, triangle has now been converted to a symbol. I know this by the blue block, blue box and the hollow circle in the middle. So now I need to get to the flames timeline. So what I just need to do is double click. And if I look over here, it says scene one and then flame. So this now is, I'm now in the timeline for this specific symbol. Um, you can see how it's changed to layer one instead of fire. And um, so I'm gonna click on my first keyframe here. So I'm on frame one, it tells me right here. And then if I go over here, we have insert keyframe, onion skin, edit multiple frames, create classic tween, um, and then like loop, play, you know, step forward, step back. Um, you guys should have seen this when you were doing the bouncing ball. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit create a classic tween. Okay, classic tweens are purple. And you can see here, it's now given me a tween from, um, frame one to frame 24, so one second of um, animation. So, um, and these dots right now show that there's no keyframe, so it doesn't know where it's going. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to one real quick, and I'm actually going to adjust my flame. So I'm gonna make it thin and um, thinner and kind of pointier, more like a real flame. And then right here, this is like an anchor point um, on our object. I need to drag this down. What this does is puts like a pin in your object and everything moves around this pin, whether rotating, resizing, all of it. Um, so right now I want this flame to go up and down and the base to not move um, when we do this. So I need to move that pin down. So now I'm gonna go to frame 12 and I'm going to put in a keyframe there. And you'll see now I have an arrow. So this is showing that it knows there's a transition or going to be. And then I'm going to go to 24 and I'm going to insert another keyframe. So right now there's no motion because my triangle is staying the same. 
So now I'm going to go to um, my uh, 12 and I'm going to squish my flame down. Oh, and I don't want to move it, I just want to squish it. So Control Z is undo, um, just like we've um, on all the other programs. So I'm going to squish and then it's going to get tall again. So if I drag this over now, my flame's going up and down, kind of like a flame would um, in real life. Okay. Um, so, and then if you want to always check it, you can run this little blue tab right here back and forth, um, or you can hit play. Okay, so now we are going to um, click on the top left arrow, and we're going to go back into um, our scene one. Okay, so you can see here that this is now changed based on the scene. So now we're going to select the um, flame and we're going to duplicate it three times, or not three times, twice. So if you hit Control Alt, if you have your selection tool, Control Alt um, will give me, um, will duplicate it for us quickly. So it's Control Alt and I just grab three and I'm just going to kind of place them where I want them to go. Um, here in the flame and just kind of have them a little, you know, spread out. Um, but yeah, so that looks fine for now. Okay. So we have now three flames. Um, the issue with this is that these flames, um, need to be adjusted and maneuvered. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some frames to our main timeline. Um, that way we'll be able to see our animation. Okay, so we are going to go to one second and um, we just need to add, oh, do you want to add a keyframe there? So if we right click, um, just switch this to frames and then click 24. Um, so I don't need another keyframe. This is the end of my animation here. So if you look, they're all going up and down together, which doesn't look like a real realistic flame yet. Um, so Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to set um, some different settings that are able to um, go. So I'm going to select, um, I'm going to select my first flame over here. Um, and then if you look, um, my object panel is opened again. It's set to graphic because this is now a graphic symbol. Um, our sizing, we have a color effect and we have a looping effect. So we're going to be messing with the color effect and with the looping, but first we're going to do looping. So looping does exactly what it says that um, inside animation that we do with the tweening, um, that is just going to continuously go for however long our main timeline is, these will go up and down and loop, okay? But if you see right here, it says frame picker and it says first frame. So if we went in back into that timeline, all of these are starting on frame one and looping, which is why they all look the same right now. So what I want to actually do is set them at different points within the frame to start um, on that timeline. So you can see here, I have them so I'm just picking different frames, one through 24. You can select whatever you want. So if you look here now, they all kind of move like a real firewood, okay? So last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna adjust some of the color. So right now they're all kind of blending in um, and we might want to have some different entering color. Now if I go into the actual flame here and I change this color, it's going to change all of these colors. Um, so there's a way to get around this. I'm going to select this middle one and the color effect will not affect all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tint and then over here we can adjust our tint. 
So we can add more red, more green, um, and more blue. Um, you can click over here, and then here is some more colors. Um, here's like our normal wheel. If you're looking, go to hue, um, and maybe I want this to be more of a red, um, more of like an orangey red. So, okay, so there we go. So now um, my flames have a little bit more definition in it, okay? So last thing that I wanna show you is next to this properties underneath here. Um, so this is fire, so we're gonna lock this and then we're gonna add a new layer. So new layers over here on the timeline. I'm gonna name this um, firewood, okay? So this, Oh, um, so, sorry, I forgot. There's no space, that you can't add spaces. Um, it's considered a special character in um, labeling. So you have to just do um, an underscore um, for a space if you want a space in there. So right now you can see, I'm gonna go to frame one. I have nothing on this right now. If I go to library, if you see here, here is the flame I've created. And then here's the tween one that we created. And then if you look right here, I have wood and glow. So this was another um, symbol that was created for this one. So what I can do is I can click and I can drag and now it's down here. Same thing with my flame. So if I need another flame, I can click and drag and there it is, ready to go. So every symbol that we create is going to be in your library for future use. Um, especially when you're doing heavy animations and you have like arm pieces, hand pieces, head pieces, all of that, um, this comes very helpful. You don't have to continue to redraw if you are converting things to symbols. So what I can do now is I can lay my um, logs here and you can see um, this adds um, the frames and then um, I'm just gonna hit loop right here which will loop my main timeline. If you look here, um, the looping is only looping like those first three, so I just want to click and drag to that one second, and then if I hit play, my animation now goes. Okay, so we have just created a what would be called a GIF, which is a very short looping animation. Okay, so um, up here, you guys can send me the this file here, um, and then if you wanted to export this. So if we're doing small ones, if we're going to put them on Schoology or a website or something like that, um, we are going to export animated GIF. Okay, so that is what we would save it as for use in any other um, thing. Um, it will come up like this. Um, you can name it um, right here. Do, do, do. Where is it? So um, these are just all our settings. Everything's usually Find diffusion, yeah, there's nothing to change. And then this is just our color table of all the colors that we have in it. And then hit save. And then this is where you'll go and make sure it's saved to your OneDrive. Um, the cloud doesn't really um, hold the cloud. So Adobe Cloud will hold this library, but it you can't save these directly to um, the cloud. So go ahead and save them to your OneDrive. Um, make it like an animation folder somewhere in here. So I have a lot of folders on my desktops, but maybe um, if you just right click and hit new and folder and just animation. So that way you have them all in one place. Um, and then I'm gonna click here and then just say fire. And where did my animation? Right here. And then hit save and then you are good to go.